G'day, here's the third in our series of videos about homeostatic control and this time it's using a marine example again but with a slightly different twist because these fish came straight off the Africa series with David Attenborough. Firstly, what's homeostasis? It's the maintenance of constant internal conditions despite fluctuating environmental conditions and when we start talking about that in terms of water balance it's really relating to osmosis. As you know, osmosis is the movement of water from high concentration to low concentration through a semi-permeable membrane. So if you live in fresh water, that means that your body contents are saltier. Water is going to want to come in by osmosis, and so you've got to actively get rid of it. But if you live in salt water, the reverse happens, because the environment's saltier, so water gets sucked out of the body. My example is the African giant kingfish, as seen on the Africa episode 4 with David Inborough. And in that example, they live most of their lives in the ocean, but they will swim up estuaries and rivers, and nobody really knows why. In the oceans, they've got to actively drink to take in excess water, but doing so brings in all sorts of other things which need to be removed, and so they produce really concentrated urine so that they keep the water in the body. Well, how does this work? Well, the kidney's quite a neat little organ. It sits in the middle of the body cavity of the fish, directly above where the swim bladder would be, running right along the spine. So when you're gutting the fish, it's that last little bit you pull out when you're trying to pull out all the bits. The way it's structured, all the blood flows through a very dense capillary bed, which is all called the nephron. And that's can, surrounded by an, an afferent tubule, which collects all the stuff that comes out of that nephron, sort of gets squeezed out by pressure as it all flows through. And then all the water and glucose and ions and everything else that goes into those collecting tubules flows down through into the medulla of the kidney and goes down this big long loop called the loop of Henle. And in the loop of Henle, as you can see in the picture there, that bottom blue arrow, it's pointing to a really dense capillary bed. And that reabsorbs pretty much anything that the fish wants to keep. So how does it work for the kingfish? Well, when they're in their saltwater environment, the water content in their blood will decrease because they're trying to drink that salt water and it keeps removing all that water from there. Hypothalamus picks that up, sends the signal for the muscles in the mouth and the esophagus to drink more salt water. So by that way, then the kidney keeps retaining lots of water and you get an increase in the water content, hopefully. When they're in fresh water though, things get a bit screwed up because, all, as I mentioned before, the water's all constantly entering the, entering the body and it's trying to get out. You've got to try and pump it out. And this is a specific disruption, so you've got to change your kidney to stop it reabsorbing water. So the way you do that is increase the water content of the blood, which is probably just slightly off your screen there. The hypothalamus registers that there's now more water in the blood and signals to the kidney so that the membranes will stop reabsorbing the water down in that loop of Henle. And as a result, the kingfish should produce lots of urine. That's what it says on the right-hand side there. And that's about it, really. This the kingfish having to change these environments get exposed to very, very different different osmotic pressures, and so as a result, if they don't adapt, they're going to die. Alright, thanks very much guys. Hopefully that's enough information for you for now.